Okay, so it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Stefano Mora from Paris, who will give a second talk on completed cohomology of Shimura curves. Okay, so uh, well, thank you very much again uh, for, uh, for attending to the course for this uh, extremely kind uh, invitation. I'm very happy to continue to, to, to give uh, this series of talk. So just a reminder, this is the bibliography. Um, so today, once again, we are going to, so once again, the main reference uh, that we're following is the paper, uh, the work of Hamilton on Inventiones uh, 2006 on the interpolation of system of IK eigenvalues and uh, a course, uh, lecture course uh, given by Christoph Roy in OC. And uh, um, we start. So um, I remind, uh, I just remind where we ended last time. So um, we ended with the following, the following theorem. Which is 215 in the reference M1. So the first statement is that the, the space of completed cohomology that we introduced last time, so which we wrote as H tilde one. KPW. So remember that W is an algebraic. Uh, so remember that W is an algebraic representation um, of um, J2 FP. FP, uh, you know, oh, FP is the completion uh, at uh, a prime P of our total area field. So this and H hat one. KPW, so these are admissible Banach space representation. Banach admissible with respect to any compact open. So I, we just pick the, the, the maximal one, the standard one. And the action is unitary if moreover W is equal to E. The second point is that we have uh, the following factorization. So, I remind you that H1 K upper P W, we have a map here injective, which, which has dense image. So this is the natural map to the completion H1 K P W. And here we have uh, another map which has closed image H tilde one of K upper P W. So now remember that the um, remember that the the, the co-kernel of this map uh, was the rational state module of the usual cohomology. Now, since we are working this particular case of a compact uh, Shimura curve, it's possible to prove that uh, actually this is an isomorphism. Because once again, this is very specific to our situation that we are working with uh, compact Shimura curves. All right, so this map factorized through the smooth vectors of this guy. So here we have H1 K upper PW. We take the smooth part and this map factors this way. And what is the point? The point is that in fact, this map comes from an edge map from a spectral sequence uh, as uh, an edge coming from a, the following spectral sequence hi stable of uh, gzp so once again it's not important to specify this group but just for clarity i just put it all the, all the way and here I take the H tilde J, K upper PW. So this sequence converges to H I plus J, K PW. This spectral sequence works uh, in very much generality, generality for arithmetic quotients. But the fact that the, we have an isomorphism here, this is extremely specific to the the fact that we're working with Shimura curves. All right, so let's start them. 
I remember, I, I recall you that these HI stable are the derived factor of uh, H stable. So in particular, I'm claiming that uh, um, we have uh, enough injective in the category of Banach space representation. So the remark is the following the remark. HI stable GZP are the derived factor of the factor H not um, stable GZP. I just would like to remind you that this is uh, the, the, the factor of smooth vectors. So here we have uh, Banach, Banach admissible GZP to the category of uh, um, smooth representation, that smooth GZP over E. So the lemma, the lemma is the following. Lemma. The category of Banach space representation admissible Banach space representation over a compact PR economic group has enough injectives, has enough. Injectives. I will sketch the proof because um, this is instructive with respect to the example that I gave yesterday. So the proof uh, is the following. So the example of yesterday example of yesterday was showing us the following was showing, was, was showing us that uh, the, if I look at the space of continuous function with the SUC norm, so C quantum H E. So I, I just would like to remind you that this is a Banach space representation where we put the uh, norm of the SUP. So if I dualize, this is equal to the Ivasava algebra, so H one over P. So now, if I take an admissible Banach space representation, so if V is an admissible Banach space representation, then by definition, the dual receives a subjection from a direct sum of this C continuous H E, we have a certain direct sum to the R for some integer R. And so if we dualize back by the, the equivalence of categories of Schneider Teitelbaum, if we dualize back, we get an injection of V in, inside the, the space of continuous function with the sup norm. And here we have a certain direct sum. So this, I remind you, this is the theorem of schneider teitelbaum And so it's enough to show that this, uh, this, this Banach space uh, is an injective object in the category of Banach space, of admissible Banach space representation. So it's enough to show that C continuous H E, is injective in uh, the category of uh, um, admissible Banach space, sorry, admissible attack. Sorry, I removed the sound because it's annoying. All right. So it's an injective object in here. And this is clear because, again, by the equivalence uh, 
between Banach space representation, admissible Banach space representation and the modules of finite type over this ring, this is equivalent to ask that O, uh, double bracket H, one over P is projective. In the category of modules of finite type over O double bracket H, one over P, which is true. All right, so now we are reassured because we know that we can actually derive the factors and uh, let's sketch the proof. Uh, let's give uh, a proof uh, of uh, the, the fact that these space are admissible and of the spectral sequence. So actually, um, there are, um, Oh, there are studies not visible. Thank you. Here we go. Because I wrote very small. This is just modules of finite type over the ring. So, so it is clearly projected. All right. So let's start with considering the fact that the, this Banach space are this Banach space given by computer homology are, are admissible. Um, so Sketch of of the theorem. So for simplicity now, assume, also for simplicity, we assume that W is uh, just a trivial representation. So for simplicity, um, W is going to be a trivial representation. And now note the following. Note that if I consider a smaller compact open subgroup, well, um, we have a finite index embedding. We have that O double bracket KP double bracket. So inject into here. Has finite index. So why is this remarkable? Because um, if our representation is admissible as a, a KP Banach space representation, then it's going to be admissible as a, a GCP Banach space representation. So, and why is this important? Because now we can assume that uh, KP is sufficiently small, so we can assume uh, throughout uh, that uh, um, the, quotient space k upper p k lower p c is a compact Riemann surface is a compact Riemann surface so in particular so this is the key point the key point is that um, it has a a finite triangulation. So it has a finite triangulation. Call this triangulation TK, T lower K. So what does it mean? It means that as a topological space, this is homeomorphic to a finite sum of uh, simplexes. I would like to make a remark uh, that even if uh, this Riemann surface is non-compact, so if in general we consider arithmetic quotient uh, of a GLN, well, this is not a big, this is not a problem. Why? Because um, it was proved by, so this is a remark that I would like to make here. So the remark is the following. If we consider if we consider G to be a GLN, then we have a result of Ash, so which is a small dimensional, the paper small dimensional 
classifying spaces. This is a paper of uh, 1984. So he shows that uh, uh, this double quotient contains a compact subspace, which is a deformation retract. The, the corresponding double coset space contains a compact deformation retract. which means that the, the cohomology of the space can be computed by this cohomology, by the cohomology of this compact. And so there is no problem in approxim approximating with uh, um, a finite triangulation. All right, okay. So now what is going to happen is the following. Um, so what happens now, so now remember that we have uh, a, a tower of spaces. So remember that if uh, uh, K P prime is a compact open normal subgroup in K P, recall that we have this Galois cover. So uh, I will call this uh, Y K prime. So this is the same level is fixed. And the lower level, the, the P level is um, K prime now. So this guy give us a Galois cover. Is the retract like the Borel cell compactification? Um, this uh, I cannot uh, I cannot tell you for sure now. I cannot tell you for sure. Now. I'm not I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure that it's like the, the compactification. I, I, I will try to reply properly later. Okay, so um, here, so remember that this is a Galois covering map. And so what we can do is the following. Um, so let's write TD as the finite, uh, the set of, um, the finite set of d-dimensional syntaxes. So this is the finite set, uh, finite set of uh, d-dimensional simplexes in uh, the triangulation. And uh, what I can do is to pull back these uh, um, a simplex three, through this map which means the following. So let me write as follows, PD of KP prime delta. So this is going to be the D-dimensional simplexes in the pullback of delta. So this is the D-dimensional uh, simplex in uh, the pullback of delta. So what is the key point? Um, so the key point is the following, is that uh, um, so this set is a principal homogeneous space. So this is a um, Kp over Kp prime space. And the second uh, key point is that if I take the inverse limit over all K prime, well, this is going to be isomorphic to Kp. So uh, the second key point is that if I consider the inverse limit, which I call the T hat, so this is by definition is the limit over the K primes of PD uh, K prime delta. So this is going to be isomorphic to KP. So these facts are um, 
important in the computation of the cohomology. Because um, classically, well, we know that uh, the cohomology, so classically, we know that uh, the HI cohomology, KP, sorry, K lower P prime, K upper P with E coefficient is computed by the following complex. So it's computed by the following complex. We take uh, the product of uh, the d-dimensional simplexes uh, in uh, T prime. So what is, uh, what is this? Uh, this is uh, the d-dimension, the analog uh, of this guy for a triangulation in here. So here I consider the h naught of delta prime. And this can be rewritten as uh, I can just split. I, I can just split off this product into the following. So I take uh, delta. Uh, delta is in T D, and then I take uh, the delta prime in the pull d-dimensional pullbacks. So T D of K P prime delta. I'm just rewriting. Here I have delta, and here I have E. And so what is the key point? Well, the key point is that this guy can be identified as uh, the continuous function of Kp mod Kp prime with, e with e coefficients times uh, h naught delta E. So now what happens, so in order to compute, uh, sorry, so in order to compute uh, our completed cohomology, we have to pass to the limit over all uh, um, k prime. So pass uh, to the limit over all k p prime. So let me call this complex, uh, I call it uh, c k upper p. So it is this complex. So now I pass, uh, to the limit, and what happens is the following. Um, yeah, so um, the H I K upper P E is now the cohomology of the following complex. So here we have. Uh, the product over delta, delta in TD of what? Here we had the continuous functions of T hat D delta. But remember that this is just KP, as I mentioned before, because uh, this, uh, this is a principal homogeneous space. So here we have p hat d. Um, tensored up with h naught delta e, etc., with its natural kp action. So just a, a, a word on uh, about this, uh, the fact that we get this guy. Well because we are working with finite product and filtral inductive limit. So this is equal to the product over TD of the limit over KP prime of this other guy. So delta prime in TD Kp prime e, um, delta, sorry, of the h naught delta e, and remember that this 
is nothing but this guy. So when I pass to the limit, so notice that here, so here we have a K P over K P prime action over here. Then we pass to the limit here, we have this isomorphism. So, okay, so this established this cohomology. Now it's a similar argument, so similar. So these, uh, these, uh, these complex, I will call this complex for later use, uh, C um, KP upper P not hat. I will need this complex later on. So with a similar argument, we can prove that uh, the H um, tilde I KPE is given by the cohomology of the following complex. So it's given by, uh, here we have uh, the product delta TD. And now the only difference is that here we are considering the continuous functions. Continuous function here, I can write directly, I can write directly K lower P, E, thanks H naught tens over E H naught delta E and so on. Just be careful that uh, uh, well, in order to get uh, this uh, uh, the sequence, you should just replace this H naught delta E in the previous computation with uh, first of all H naught delta O mod P to the S. Then you pass to the direct limit over the level. And then you pass to the inverse limit over S. All right. So we get uh, this, uh, this exact sequence. And now we are in business. Because now by the basic example number two, so now basic uh, recorded basic example number two was telling us that C continues of uh, KPE is an admissible Banach space representation. So this is ban admissible of KPE. And this category is abelian. This is abelian by the theorem of Schneider type bound. And so, and so we conclude that since the uh, HI is the cohomology of the complex, uh, we conclude that HD the I K upper PE is an admissible Banach space representation. Uh, K P E. So now the little remark uh, is that the same. So this is another remark uh, which I will put uh, in green. Uh, Exactly the same proof works by replacing the H naught delta E by H naught delta of the, of the line bundle. Um, well, we get exactly the same result uh, for um, with coefficient. So by replacing, so same proof, uh, So we replaced H naught delta E by H naught delta, the local system W, and we get that H tilde I with coefficient KP W is an admissible Banach space representation over E. All right. So now we want to prove uh, the existence of the spectral sequence above. 
And then we'll prove uh, that uh, the spectral sequence, the, the edge map, uh, gives the isomorphism between uh, uh, smooth vectors. All right. So um, we show the existence of a spectral sequence. This is classical, but uses also the realization, the computation that I did before with the complexes. So we prove now number two. Sorry. The proof of number two. So now um, recall the following thing. So recall. This is a classical um, result uh, in um, homological algebra. So if uh, we have uh, V dot uh, is a resolution by injective objects. So if I take, uh, so uh, V1, uh, so this is um, a complex in a, in a billion category. So here I take the Banach space admissible Banach space representation. Um, so these are injective objects. So this is an injective complex. And if I consider a left exact factor, and so here, whoops, here we go. So here we have H not stable, KP. This is left exact. Then we have a spectral sequence of hybrid homology. Then we have a spectral sequence in upper homology. Which is the following? Well, we have uh, uh, the A two i comma j given by the h i stable of k p, the usual cohomology h j of the complex. So this converges to h i plus j of h zero stable k lower p. V not. So here we apply the the fun left exact factor to each term of this complex. So for instance, uh, this uh, uh, is in the, the book of McClary, user guide uh, to spectral sequence. So for instance, C. User. Guide to spectral sequence, Cambridge University Press, fifty-eight. Okay, so now recall that um, recall that uh, the H tilde is given by the cohomology of the complex where we have the continuous fun function. So record the following, record that H T the I K upper PW is computed is the ith cohomology of the complex. Here we have delta is in type T I of C continuous K lower P E tensor H upper not delta VW. And uh, the classical cohomology, sorry, the, 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 yeah, the HI, is the i cohomology of the following complex, where here I take the smooth functions. So this is uh, uh, the smooth functions.
So what is the key point? The key point is that first of all, this is an injective resolution. This is an injective resolution. So this is, sorry, this is an in, injective complex. And the second key point is that if I look at the smooth vectors of this guy, so the H not stable of KP of the continuous function, well, these are exactly the smooth functions. These are the smooth functions. And so the conclusion is that we apply, oops, sorry. So the conclusion is that we apply this classical result in hypercomology to the complex given by this. So the conclusion apply this result star to V dot equal to this complex. This complex, which I was calling before C hat K upper P dot. All right, so, um, whoops, here we go. So what is the point now? The point is that we have proven the existence of this exact sequence. Of the theorem. We still have to understand why we have an isomorphism. The edge map of this vector sequence gives an isomorphism. So, sorry, I need to check the timer. So, I still have about 20 minutes. Okay. So, let's understand why uh, this complex is a uh, uh, the, uh, we, we have the isomorphism that I was spending about. Well, first of all, let me remark the following also, which will be useful in the sequel. So another remark um, is that uh, um, we have an isomorphism. So we have an equivalent isomorphism between uh, the H tilde I of K upper PW. And this also holds at integral level. So this is an isomorphism, K lower P equivariant with uh, HT the I KP E tensor over EW. So in particular, these are Banach space representation. So if you want, uh, this isomorphism gives you an alternative proof of the fact that it's enough to prove that this guy is admissible to conclude that this one is admissible too. So in, part so in particular, we get again that the H T the I K P W is an admissible Banach space representation. All right. So uh, the upshot of the theorem is what? Well, it's the following. So upshot. Is that uh, we have the following short exact, long exact sequence, sorry which looks as follows. So H1 of uh, uh, the stable cohomology um, H tilde zero K upper PW. So I will, uh, um, just to save uh, the ink of my pen, uh, I will not write uh, from now on the, the compact group here. 
Here uh, we have uh, the H1, the classical H1 K upper PW. Here we have the H1 stable. Of uh, um, H tilde one K upper PW. And here we have the H two um, H two uh, stable of the H tilde not um, KPW. And then it continues. Oh, 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 sorry. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, it's okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, um, ah, sorry, here we should have a zero. And here uh, we have a one. All right. So what is the key point? So it's enough to show. So this is the key point. It's now enough to show that the H1 stable, sorry, the HI stable of, uh, of what? Of H tilde not k upper p w is equal to zero for i equal one or two. And that, because then we get the desired isomorphism. So now our goal is to prove this. And we will see that this, uh, in order to prove this, uh, this uh, vanishing, uh, there are two key ingredients. The first one is to use some Lie algebra cohomology. And the second one is to use the fact that this H naught actually can be ident identified with uh, um, a, a space of uh, the, the connected component of our uh, Riemann surface, which has uh, an action by an abelian group. All right, so this is going to lead us to the um, to the uh, next section. So this is section three, local analytic representation in the algebra. And Lie algebra cohomology. So the setup is that uh, we have our GQP, which is uh, a um, locally analytic group, uh, ZP, so this is a locally ZP analytic group. So locally is isomorphic too. So it has an open cover by balls of the following dimension. Here we have FP over QP locally. And so um, what does it mean that um, a function is locally analytic and that a vector is locally analytic. So the definition is the following, uh, is that, so first of all, I pick a Banach space and I pick a function f from G to V. So this function is locally analytic if uh, there exists uh, an open cover of G such that F restricted to UI is analytic. 
and a vector. So um, if I uh, consider a Banach space representation of G, and I pick a vector in here, well, V is locally analytic. If the orbit map G goes to G times V is locally analytic. So what is the key point? The key point is that now we can uh, describe so now we can describe uh, the space of uh, local analytic vectors. So now, so hence, uh, if we pick uh, V, which is a, a Banach space representation of GQP over E, we can define the space of uh, locally analytic vectors. So V in V, V is locally analytic. This has an action of GQP. And this contains the action. Uh, so this contains the, the space of uh, locally algebraic vectors, which contains the, the space of uh, smooth vectors. Locally algebraic vectors, because locally the orbit are uh, polynomials. All right, and so what is the advantage? Is that now we have a, an action of the Lie algebra. So the advantage V uh, analytic, local analytic, has an action of uh, curly G, which by definition is the Lie algebra of GQP. So why is it so? To just uh, recall you the action is that uh, um, we have uh, the exponential map to G, which is defined in a neighborhood of the of zero. So this is defined in a neighborhood of zero. And this is um, just X goes to the exponential series. And so we can define the action as follows. So if V is local analytic, then the action of an element in the Lie algebra over a local analytic vector is by definition the specialization the t equals zero of the derivative of the following analytic function. So x of t times x. So here we have the usual, I mean, we have the group action over P, which is analytic. And so we can consider T equals zero. And so now uh, we have a Lie algebra over a field, we can consider just the Lie algebra cohomology, the classical Lie algebra cohomology. And all these uh, formalism you can find, for instance, in the Vibel. Section seven. Okay, so we have, uh, we can define the Lie algebra cohomology, HIG of V analytic to be the derived factor of uh, the, uh, the G isotypical part. So this is the derived, derived factor. of the following factor. So M is a module over the enveloping algebra. So this is a module over the universal enveloping algebra of G. And this goes to the, the vectors, the, the element of the module, which are killed 
by by G. So G times M is equal to zero for all G in the Lie algebra. Okay. So what do we need now? Well, we need to relate. So we want to relate the space of a stable cohomology to the Lie algebra. And this is going to be the content of the following theorem. So theorem it is again in Emerton. It is the theorem 1.1.13. We consider an admissible Banach space representation. So let V be uh, an admissible Banach space representation GZP over E with compatible action of our periodic E group uh, with uh, compatible of GQP. Then we have the Eisenhower things that we want. Then the H star is stable, HI stable of V is isomorphic to the HI of the Lie algebra of the locally native vectors. All right. So uh, the proof we well we have two um, two distinct uh, two distinct approaches. One is the, is the case i equals zero, and then the other one is the general case. We genuinely need uh, two different uh, approach. All right. So the first case is the following. So case i equal to zero. So the iterate action of the element in the Lie algebra is uh, as you expect. So x to the m, the Lie algebra over b is by definition, let's define as the iterate action of the Lie algebra. So for x, x in G, m bigger with z, or and v a local analytic vector. Okay, so now um, I can express the, the exponential action. So I can express this exponential action in terms of this iteration. So if uh, T is uh, small enough so that I can define the exponential map. Uh, then uh, uh, what happens is that the exponential of Tx acting on V, this is the sum over M bigger than zero, then T to the N, N factorial of uh, xm times b. And this is the, the Lie action. So this is a group action, this is a Lie action. So what do we deduce? Well, this means exactly that x, sorry, x times b, so this is the Lie, is equal to zero if and only if the exponential t times sorry t times x times b this is so this is the, the usual action is constant for all t 
the sufficient this mode. And so what is the point? The point is that uh, the image of the exponential map uh, contains uh, an open subgroup of uh, ZP. No, so since uh, the image of the exponential map contains an open subgroup, of GCP, we conclude that V is, so V is fixed by a sufficiently small open compact if and only if V uh, is killed by X. So V is fixed by K P prime for some Kp prime, if and only if x times p is equal to zero for all x in p. So this proves the case i equals zero. So I'm a little bit hesitating concerning the case i bigger than zero, just because uh, this uh, requires uh, um, a certain number of um, of discussion, but yeah, but so I will do the first reduction, the first reduction step. All right. So now we have the case i a strip is bigger than zero. So in this case, we have some, we need some more refined construction. So recall the following. So recall that H I stable is computed by applying the H zero stable to a complex of, um, space of continuous functions. So this is computed by uh, applying the functor smooth vectors, say GZP, to a complex of the following form zero. So we, we are considering an injective resolution. We have a direct sum, a certain direct sum of continuous functions. Here we have GCP. Another direct sum of uh, continuous functions. And so on. And what do we want? What is the key point? So the key point is that, uh, so note that if I take the local analytic vectors of the space of, of space of continuous function, well, then I get the space of uh, local analytic functions. So if I take C continuous, so this is injective, huh? this is an injective resolution in the category of Banach space, admissible Banach space representation. So C continuous. Uh, GCP E, and then I take the locally analytic vector. This is just the space of locally analytic functions, actually of analytic function, because here we are working on a compact. So here we have local analytic GCP. These are the F of GCP. E, F is locally analytic. All right, so the key point is the following now. The key point is the following theorem of Schneider Teitelbaum. Uh, Schneider Teitelbaum.
in another paper, which is the algebra of periodic distribution, so algebra of periodic distribution, is the paper in, of 2003, in Invenciones, which tells us that the factor V goes to V local analytic is exact. And so what is the upshot? The upshot is that we get a resolution of V analytic. So the, the upshot, we have that, um, we have a resolution zero V analytic, here we have a direct sum of C analytic GZP E C analytic GZP E here we have another direct sum and so on. So what is the goal? Whoops. So the goal is to prove that uh, this, uh, C, this complex is acyclic. So prove So we want to prove that this complex is H not G acyclic. Because then this we show that um, the, this complex computes the um, derived fun the derived factor of the, the algebra homology. The complex the factor H I G V analytic. And so we get the desire. And so if we know that this complex, which comes from taking the analytic vectors of this one, computes actually this uh, the, this uh, H I, then we are done and we get the we get a desired isomorphism. So next time, tomorrow, we're going to show that the HI of these guys are zero. So next time, we prove that the HI of G C analytic of GZP comma E is equal to zero for all i strictly bigger than zero. Okay, so I think this is the time for uh, for, for, for today. So uh, yeah. please uh, feel free to okay. ask a question so, if you can. Yeah, let's thank you first. So uh, are there any questions, comments? Uh, I don't know. Have we? Can we? Yeah, people can mute themselves. I guess unmute themselves. Uh, I have a question. Can you explain why only the trivial coefficient is a uh, unitary? And uh, yeah, unitary means the action of uh, G is unitary, right? Not just a yes. GCP. Yeah, it means that uh, there is uh, an invariant lattice for the action of G. Okay, thanks. Uh, then why only the trivial coefficient is a uh, unitary? Well, because we can prove that the action is unitary on the space of, uh, of functions. So yes. what happens is that uh, when we put a trivial coefficient then we have a um, unitary action on the, on the space of functions. Yes, I know, but uh, for non-trivial coefficients. For non-trivial well, coefficients, it's not true anymore that the action is unitary. Okay. Uh, because, we are, because we are perturbating, uh, because we are perturbating the action by this guy. Whoops. Um, 
So we have this isomorphism here. And this is G-equivalent isomorphism. Oh, oh, this is G-equivalent. Okay, thanks. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thanks, thanks. Can I ask a question about the uh, last theorem? Yes, please. Uh, so, so uh, why can't you use in, in this theorem of Emerton 1.1.13 simply the spectral sequence of composite uh, functors if you know that V2, V locally analytic, is an exact functor at this theorem of Schneider and Teilbaum, and you know that taking the smooth functor is the composition of taking the Lie algebra invariance of the locally analytic functors, why do you have to go through all these computations with the resolution? Well, I mean, it's so um, it's standard the fact that we are using uh, a Poincare lemma to prove that. Uh, so the fact that this is uh, zero is then uh, is uh, a standard factor in the algebra cohomology using the Poincare lemma. But otherwise, uh, I don't see. Otherwise, I, I don't can, see. Can, can, can you uh, bring up the uh, theorem as, as you stated it uh, that, that you're proving now? Uh, yes. Can you go to the slide, please? Yeah. Yes. Uh, tuck, tuck. So this one? No, no, no. Before, before the, the, the theorem that you really want to prove 1.1.13 uh, of, of Emerton. Yes, I have to find it. Ah, here we go. Here we go, this one. Yeah, thanks. So, I mean, you're proving it by computing, actually, the stable cohomology using a resolution. And, yes. And, and actually reducing everything to computations in modules of functions on the group. But yes. this is a composite. H0 stable is the composite of H0G on the functor sending V to V locally analytic. So the, there is a spectral sequence of composite functors and, and 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 once you quote this theorem of Schneider and Teilbaum that V goes to V locally analytic is exact, I think you don't have to- Yes, it's an exact factor. Yes, 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 yes. Or, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's, maybe the categories are not good enough, but um, but if there were just ordinary abelian categories, just homological algebra would, would give it now. Um, yes, I mean, I think it's possible that it's like a standard homological algebra in order to prove this theorem. I, I just wanted to give, I just wanted to give like a very explicit proof. No, I, I understand. Yeah, okay, thanks. I'll, I'll look up the paper by Emerton. Maybe he explains. Does he go through this uh, too or, yeah? Essentially, yes. He's going to through all this. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So there's a comment by Aditya Karnataki. So, so there is a comment that uh, Gorton inspector sequence are for abelian categories. Yeah, I mean, it's in relation to the current discussion that. Uh, right, right. That this, this was composition. My, my question. Maybe the yeah, categories the, are not good abelian categories, the, the category of locally analytic. Oh, it's not abelian, yeah. you say. Yeah, it's not abelian, yeah. Isn't that true? The, the, um, the category of uh, Banach admissible. Uh, the category of Banach admissible is a billion, yes. Is a billion, right. I see, I see. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but maybe the category of local analytic is. That, that's a problem, is yes. Analytic. Yeah, yeah, so I, see, I see. You don't okay. just yeah. use the homological algebra machinery, but you have to follow up the ideas in the proof of such a thing explicitly with, with resolutions, probably. That, that was my question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right. So we can't take this discussion to the coffee break, but uh, if there are no more questions, then let's uh, thank Stefano again. And thank you. We'll resume in 20 minutes for Professor Boyd's talk. Yeah, thank you.